So today I want to try something a little bit different. In a recent video, I sort of showed that it is possible to install games onto USB flash drives that actually perform at or better than the hard drives that you may be pulling those games off of. So today I want to try the same sort of idea except with my network attached storage, or my NAS for short. And if you want to check out the USB flash uh, drive video, you can check that out in the card uh, linked here. But let's jump right into uh, sort of the experience of booting up a game from the network attached storage. So today we're going to look at Skyrim. Um, and to sort of show you that there's no like uh, local voodoo going on, if you click on local files here, uh, you'll notice that it's on drive in. You'll also notice that uh, drive in is my network attached storage, which is a two terabyte RAID array. Um, and it's over in my closet right now. So, so it's completely off of the network. Um, and everything in my network is equipped with gigabit. Um, Nix, so th that's sort of the network speed I'm working with. So go ahead and click on play, come into my Steam now. If I click into options, everything is set to the best quality uh, for 1440p. Go into advanced, we have high, and change that to high, go to high. So click OK and OK. Now everything is set to the highest possible settings. We'll go ahead and boot up. And I'm not going to cut this at all, just so you can get a feel for how fast things boot up. Um, from my network storage onto my computer. Um, while it boots, another thing worth pointing out is also that everything is hardlined here, so I'm not using any wireless cards or anything like that. Now, obviously you'll notice one of the longest load screens or probably the longest load screen you'll sort of experience while booting a game is typically the first uh, loading of the save game. And that would be the same thing in something like Grand Theft Auto uh, if we were playing that off of the NAS. And, and this that particular load screen was considerably longer than um, the load screens from a, 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 similar, a similar setup with an SSD or a flash drive or a hard drive that's local. I'm trying to remember my controls here. All right, let's see if we can shoot this fox. Right in the tushy. Um, you'll notice some screen tearing going on, and that's that, that that's a function of um, I, I I guess it's it's sort of weird. I I shouldn't be experiencing any screen tearing, but there is. But it's not due to the NAS. Um, I experienced that when I played with the flash drive, the hard drive, and the solid state, solid state drive. So it has more to do with my settings. It may be a result of the frame rate uh, cap being at 60, even though it's a 75 hertz monitor. So I'm not really exactly sure what's going on there, but it is not a function of me playing this game from the network attached storage. And as I roam around sort of into, into some different areas you don't really experience stuttering as a result of the network attached storage here nice So the next test I'm going to do, and this is the same test that I did when I was testing the flash drive and the hard drive and solid state drive. I'm going to load, or I'm going to fast travel to solitude, then I'm going to flash try, or then I'm going to fast travel to uh, Faldar's Tooth, which is on the other side of the map. Um, but on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and enter Faldar's Tooth when I get there, just to sort of show you a load screen where you're getting into a building versus just a fast travel. But obviously, fast traveling is significantly longer from the NAS than it would be for um, something like a local solid state drive. So 
if we go clear down here, Valar's tooth. Ooh, we have some enemies. Okay, right, let's go ahead and just pop inside here and sort of get this load screen, which should be a smaller load time. Obviously, no graphic is popping up, so it should be a little bit longer. But um, again, much longer than it would have been had I been running on a solid state drive for that load screen as well. And this person is just completely unaware that I'm even sitting here. And that guy's dead. So that's the basic experience of running a game in Skyrim at this point, even the enhanced edition, which I have, which is the new remastered version. It's by no means a uh, overly demanding title. So you, you sort of do have to keep that in mind. But as far as running some modern, contemporary, even AAA games, yes, load times will be significantly longer coming from a network attached drive. Um, than it would be with a local hard disk. So that that that's just gonna happen. But now I sort of wanna point out one of the use case scenarios where you may actually want to put a lot of games onto your NAS as opposed to a local machine. And that is for those people that, like me, have a setup composed of several computers in the same, um, in the same home. I am in my office right now, and, I, and this is my main computer with my Ryzen 1800X and a GTX 1070, but in the living room, I have a gaming PC, which has a GTX 970 and is very soon getting upgraded from an FX8350 to a Ryzen 5 processor. Specifically, I believe the 1400X is the way I'm going to go there, which of course I'll have benchmarks for that as well. But what I can do is install my Steam games onto my network attached storage um, after I've mapped that drive to the network and then my games stay installed at one location which I have a lot more storage of anyways but all of my computers can run the game from that location so I can run Skyrim from this computer right here and it's it's attached to the NAS and then when I go to run it from another uh, computer running Steam as long as I add that folder to the Steam library on that computer, it will automatically detect that that game is installed and be able to run it from the drive as well. Now, the one caveat to that is that save games, a lot of the time, if you talk about games like GTA, are saved locally but not um, to where the game is installed. It's usually uh, somewhere like in my documents, there's a, a folder created for that game and that's where the saves are located. Now Steam usually gets us around that by having cloud saves, so if I save it on this computer, it'll automatically sync up to the other computer. But if you do have local saves, you may have to do a little bit of copy pasting um, to keep your save games how you need them, especially if you bounce back and forth between the computers a lot. But it is a great way to save on your local storage by putting a lot of games on a NAS and then just running them from the NAS instead of installing them on multiple multiple computers, um, especially for those of you that may have a computer that has less local storage because it has a solid state drive, uh, maybe a gaming laptop that doesn't have a lot of extra storage. So that's the use case that I can imagine would be great for a lot of people that are trying to or looking into using this as a possible solution. So that's basically it guys, I just sort of wanted to bring this up because I don't really see this used a lot or even looked at a lot, but it is a very interesting solution and may be perfect for a very niche group of people. If you like this content, go ahead and give me a like down below, share, subscribe, all those things are super helpful. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware, it's very convenient because it's the same tag for everything. And of course we'll let YouTube queue up a couple cards for you to watch from my video. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware. 
Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.